On this week's show, what exactly is a lease option agreement and how do you secure one? In the news, we discover how estate agents are misleading their clients into paying higher commissions and we show you tips on how to avoid this. And we'll also be answering your property related questions. Welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an upload. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Enjoy this week's show and don't forget to share it with all your friends. Hi, I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Alistair Cunningham. And welcome to this week's episode of the Property Investors Podcast. It's going to be, it's going to be a good show this week. I'm I think looking so. forward to delving into the lease options. Yep. Uh, the estate agent news story. That's, that's bad, crazy. isn't it? I know. It's good. I'm looking forward to get, getting into that. But uh, before we get started what have you been up to this week highlight of the week go uh highlight of the week okay so we went on a team building exercise and we went go-karting did you win no did you not no didn't you used to be a like a driver you driven with lewis hamilton and stuff no not driven with lewis hamilton no i i done karting for like 12 years and i was uh pretty good um didn't you, i thought you drive on, the, on i thought you drove in the same team as him no. Did you just tell me that when we were out one night, just to show off? No. Tell me about Lewis Hamilton. Okay, no, no, he used to race at the same soccer that I used to go to, yeah. At Rye House and Hobbs. But he wasn't there at the same time? Yes. So, so you have raced with him then? No, I've not raced with him. We're different races, but he was at the same venue. When he was karting, like oh. 10 years, like when he was kart racing, like maybe 12, 13 years ago. Okay. Nice so guy. it's just like me saying that I live in the same country as him? Pretty much. So it's not very impressive at all. But it's like we're in the same vicinity. But okay, so you, you you've just been near Lewis Hamilton. Yeah. that's it. I think I, I think I I think he credits me for some of his talent. Okay, it's not quite <laughs> not as really. impressive. He's just been in the vicinity of Lewis Hamilton. Pretty much, suddenly nowhere near as. But close. interestingly, it was quite fun karting the other night. You missed out because you were not a team player. No, I didn't come. Now nah, you were not very well, but it was very fun. Nick and Nick came. I wasn't unwell. I just didn't want to come. Nick was quite quick, you know. Was he? He's not quick at setting up the cameras, but he was quick at karting. Did he? Uh, did he beat you? He didn't actually know. So he wasn't but that quick. He's still quite quick. One. Um, Glenn. Really? Yeah. He's a bit of a dark horse, that Glenn, isn't he? Well, Glenn, right? After the first race, he come out and he said, "Alistair, he goes, I need some help." He goes, "Can you help me?" So I, I, I gave him a little bit of advice on what he was doing wrong, and then he went out and he uh, just completely ignored all the all the warning flags. Like there was a big crash. Um, I think Samuel caused a bit of a pile up, um, and then um, Glenn was just like just drove through everybody, just kept going when everyone else stopped, and he won by about a lap. Wow, <laughs> it was quite funny. Wow. Okay, awesome. So, Lisa, what option. have you been up to? What have I been up to? I, I've I've just been working. I haven't, okay. I haven't particularly done anything exciting, to be honest. It's just been non-stop, mm-hmm. non-stop work. But it's good. It's good. But I knew you'd been carting, so I thought I'd, I thought you'd have won. I'm shocked you didn't win. That uh, does shock me. I was fastest, but I just because I was obeyed the rules. And uh, it's been working and drinking classy, classy coffee. Mick Cafe. Nothing but nothing, nothing, nothing beats McDonald's coffee, as you can say. Uh, sorry, so lease options. Yep. Um, Let me just get that. Let's just just turn it off. How sorry. unprofessional. My mistake. How unprofessional. Uh, before I criticise too much, let me just double check. Yeah, mine is on silent. How unprofessional. <laughs> um, so lease option agreements. Yes. Someone asked me to sum up what a lease option was in 20 seconds the other day. And this is the way I this is the way I described it. Yep. Okay, so when you buy a car mm-hmm. on HP, you take ownership of the car, yep. but then you don't buy it for a few years, and you've got the option to either give it them back or you can keep it. Yep. A lease option is the same, but with a house. Exactly. So you take ownership of the house. Mm-hmm. You've got the option to buy it in a few years, but if you don't want it, you can just give them the house back. Yep. So exactly. it, it's actually a very good sum sum up. Yeah. So moving on. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's it. That's that's what a lease option is. Okay. So that's what a lease option is. Yeah. Um, so we thought we would talk a little bit about how you actually go and get one of these. Because yeah, it's all well and good knowing that the problem is is that you can't go to a you know with a car it's easy. You go to a garage and they're like, yeah, we do HP. Whereas with you can't go to an estate agent and go, can you give me a lease option, please? I want no. that house. I want to pay. Interestingly, for it later. most estate agents don't know what this is. Mm-hmm. They have no idea what lease options are. They, they've never heard of them. They, they have no idea the, about the concept. Um, you can get them through lease option uh, through a state agent. You can get lease options through a state agents. I've done it. Um, it it's, it's a lot harder because you have to... I say this a lot. Property is a people's business. Once you get to know the person at the state agents, then the deals will come. So I, I've secured a lease option through an estate agent and I've just paid them their fee so they're not missing out. Um, yeah. 
So you definitely can do it. By far, the easiest way to do it is direct to vendor. Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, most people don't, most sort of everyday sort of vendors don't really know what lease options are. And mostly when you first broach the subject, their guard goes up, they're like this, like, no way, it sounds dangerous, I've never heard of it, it's probably a scam or a con. Um, in reality, we just have to sort of take a step back. Do you think partly that's the way that you explain it? Do you think if you, do you, think if you explained it as simply as high purchase, they might be like, okay, Maybe. it kind of makes Maybe. sense. Maybe. Um, I think a lot of people are programmed to have their guard up straight away and they just think because they don't understand it or know it, they switch off from it very, very early on. Um, so I know Samuel teaches when we're securing lease options, you never secure them on the on the day. You never secure them there and then. You always give the vendor plenty of time and you always advise them to go and speak to the solicitor um, so they know the, the, the legal aspect of it. It's not just a case of saying, yeah, let's just have a little handwritten contract whipped up. Uh, I'm, I'm going yeah. to take control of your house and just pay you for it in five years if I want to. It's not like that. Yeah. Um, the process is just like buying a house. It can take three months. It's not mm. a five-minute process. Yeah, um, makes sense. I think that the, the solicitor part is key. 100%. Okay, why you. do you think it's okay? Because it's the legal aspect. Because, two reasons. First reason, one, you want to make sure that the vendor's protected yeah. and that they know their legal standpoint. Um, you don't want them not really, you don't want them going into a deal not knowing what they're getting involved in. Yeah. You want them to know the full in and outs of the legal, the legal side of it. And secondly, if in five years time that property value goes up and you've agreed to sit, let's just say, uh, like uh, my example, I've got a property on lease option that I've got secured for £82,000 in five years time. Now, it's already worth around about that. So in five years' time, let's just say it's worth 110, 120,000 pound. The last thing I want is the vendor then saying to me, "Actually, I'm not going to sell it to you because it's now gone up by 30,000 pound." Because mm. at the minute, and for the last three or four years, they've been desperate to get out of this house. So they cannot have it both their own ways. They can't have, you, we can't come along and help them now and relieve them of that pressure and situation for them to say, "Thanks very much for sorting it all out for me." We're also going to have this. There's got to be benefit for both people. So what I recommend whenever you're doing a lease option is is lo- it's got to be good for both parties. So um, my particular this this example I've just shared with you uh, in five years time there's a profit share in it. So the vendor gets a profit share on, How much? on it. Uh, I'm not going to go into details, but there's a they, they do get a profit share. So if there's an I'm guessing uplift, it's a little profit share. No, no, it, it's 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 enough that they're happy. Okay, um, it, it's thirty percent. So if, it, if whatever the uplift is, I'll pay 30% of that. So if it end. goes up 100 grand, they get 30 grand. If it yeah. goes up 10 grand, they get three grand. Yeah, but... And what are you going to do? Are you going to remortgage it to give them that money? or how's, how's it um, work? I'll work out that when we get to this, that, that point, but they'll get, they'll, they will get that money. I'll buy that house off them for 30% higher than... So I'm, I can buy for 82 grand. If it's gone up to 100, that difference, they'll be getting it. That 30 grand, 30%. so 30% is like 10. Yeah. Ish. And eight, nine, um, nine, the nine. reason we've done that and the reason they're happy with that is because I've, I've spent a considerable amount of money on the property. So if I do pull out that property, I've refurbed their property for them. Yeah. So th- for them... It's a good deal. It's a good deal. For them, they've got out of a situation that they were in a bad situation. The property was not rented out for eight months. I've taken the property on. I've done all the work, damp work. I've done everything, which cost quite just under £10,000. Mm-hmm. They couldn't afford to do it. Yeah, they were paying a mortgage amount every month that they couldn't afford. I've relieved them of all of that. I've invested in the property. Yeah, and then I'm going to buy it off them in five years, and I'm going to give them a percentage of the uplift. Wow, sounds like they got a great. Well, here goes. So let, let's let's go through it. Let's quickly finish the solicitor point, and then we'll go through it. Okay, so solicitor point. First of all, it protects them mm-hmm. from you know you, you yep. being dodgy or whatever. Mm-hmm. Second, it protects you. Yep. because in five years. Five years time, if they they go, oh, this is the big one for us doing it. Is it protects protects us because if in five years time they go, oh, I didn't, I didn't realize what I was signing. It was like, well, you had a, a third, you, you had your re- own solicitor who legally you. represented you, so you, you did actually mm-hmm. no. So that's important. So they're the main two reasons. But let's go through the steps because any any deal, whether it be a property deal, a business deal, any deal has got to be a win for both sides. I think so, yeah. And a lot of people say, mm, why on earth? In fact, I saw someone post this today. On the Facebook group, why on earth would anyone want to do a lease option agreement? I saw that. You saw it as well. Yep. Okay, so let's let's go into the into that first. So why on earth would anyone want to do a lease option agreement? Like why would what when they could just sell it? Okay. Why would they? 
Can I give you a true life example? Yeah, my property. I've, I've got one property that this eighty-two thousand pound one. Yeah, right. They bought the property at the height of the boom, sort of 2006, 2007. Yeah, they actually bought it at the end of 2006. Um, and they paid high, because that's when the property market was high. They paid top dollar for that property. The, the, the property crash happened, property prices have gone down. They are stuck in a situation where they own, they're negative equity considerably. Yep. Um, they live- Okay, just for anyone that doesn't know, neg- 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 negative speak. equity mm-hmm. is where they owe more on the property than it's worth. Yeah. So for instance, they owe, they have a mortgage of £90,000, but the true market value is only about £80,000, so they're in £10,000 negative equity. So if they sell the property, they, they literally- Lose money. Lose money, yeah. Yeah. Now, um, these in the, 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 the people that own this property, they're a lovely couple, they live down in East Sussex, they bought this property up north um, because they thought it was a nice, easy investment, cheap houses, because they're used to houses at four, four five hundred thousand um, pound, and they then rented it out. They were not, they didn't really do it properly, so they were not renting it out through an estate agent, they were renting it out by putting adverts in papers and just dealing with the tenants themselves but they were trying to do that from afar and they were not really interested in the property apart from going to see it every so couple it of years. Difficult. It was very difficult for them. The property got trashed, they ended up refurbing it, then it and Literally, they just locked the property up and it sat empty for, I think it was six to eight months. It was empty with no tenants for about a year, a year and a half. Um, I actually, and they're just having to pay the mortgage every month. Yeah, they're, so they're paying, making a loss on it. They're making a loss. They're paying the mortgage and they're paying council tax as well. So I had to, um, with that property, what I had to do was I actually went to view the property because it was advertised on Rightmove. Um, it was a good deal. Great, great location for a HMO. And I went to view it and I put an offer in. The offer was accepted, but then they couldn't actually accept the offer. They accepted it, but they couldn't fulfill that. So what happened was they, Why? they they accepted it. We went through all the searches, done all that sort of stuff. And then we got notification by the um, agents, by our solicitors, that they pulled out. Now, the reason they pulled out was because the mortgage company put a stop to them selling the house because they weren't in negative equity and they couldn't pay that balance off. Mm. So the mortgage company wanted to know how they were going to clear that balance before they would allow them to sell the house. So they had to pull out because they couldn't afford to find that, to pay that difference. Um so then I basically, I, bit of a ninja sort of a um, I love research. It you, I love it when he refers to himself as a ninja, but yeah, go on. Bit of ninja research and a bit of due diligence. Yeah. I managed to find the vendors, I managed to track the actual vendors down. Um, and we, I went and met them, we got chatting. This works for them. Um, and we ended up sitting down with a blank sheet of paper. What do you want? What do I want? What can we do? Yeah. Let's get this drawn up legally, bang, let's get it done. So the first thing you need, you need people then who either can't sell their property now because they're in ne- negative mm-hmm. equity, so they can't sell it, or they can sell it now, but they, for whatever reason, don't need the money. Yeah. So let's say, for example, they got it as an inheritance, I mean, they were just in no rush. Prime so example, someone that yeah. someone that's doesn't need or can't get access to the money yep. from selling it, that's who, you, that's who you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, so... For these guys, for example, it's a win because they literally, they, they don't want to look after this house anymore. Yep. They don't want to be landlords. A lot of people don't want to be landlords. No, I we, l- we look at it and go, just rent it out and just use an estate yeah. agent. But some people aren't wired like that and they're just not interested. So if they don't want to be a landlord and they've mm-hmm. got this house, whether it's been, in, uh, they've got it as inheritance or whether they've bought it and then they're, they just don't want to do it anymore. No, they don't. Whatever, it, whatever it is. It's amazing. Uh, television puts people off a lot of things. Like a lot of these people just watch these nightmare programs on TV about tenants and they just get put off of them and they're just they're not cut out for being landlords. Yeah, which is and fair. It, That's yeah. fine. It's not, it's not, it's not for them. It's not for them. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're looking for people like that and then basically you're going to... St- because they will get more money in the long term, won't they? They will. Um, the, the agreement we've got with it, this property is because I'm renting it out as a HMO, I've converted it with, with their permission and the company, the mortgage permission. Um, it's going as a HMO. It's making a lot more money. I can afford to give them a little bit more money. So I'm not being greedy here. I'm not being greedy and I'm not cutting them down. I'm, not ju- I'm actually paying a, a, um, a little bit more money every month to clear their negative equity a little bit as well. So I'm making that, over- that sounds like it's been a bit greedy to me. No, 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 no. Hold on, no, no. 
So I'm paying the mortgage, but I'm also giving them an extra £150 a month because that's going towards paying the, paying more more of the mortgage. So they're overpaying on the mortgage at the minute. Because, okay. Just because that's what they wanted. It, and it, it, the reason they wanted that is because they went to my solicitor and the solicitor that was dealing with this advised them to do this. So the solicitor is there to protect them, not me. Ah. And the so it wasn't you being generous, you got forced into it? No, I was trying to make it look good. But ah. I was being generous because I didn't have to agree to it. Um, so th- they went to the solicitor and the solicitor said, look, I think you should ask them to pay more than just the mortgage. Because then in four or five years, if I say I'm not going to buy it, at least they've benefited from me. What point of view? Because I get to benefit from the cash flow of this property. How much are you making? Um, pro- it's not massive. So it's good for essentially a no money down property. Some of your others, like the one, you want the, the LOA you've got in Wolverhampton, you're making about a grand, aren't you? Uh, yeah, about nine, nine, ten. Um, to the point, it's very. I, I know it's nine hundred. It's fully tenanted. Um, yeah, about nine hundred and ten quid after all the bills. Just roughly nine hundred and ten. Yeah. Are you sure it's not nine hundred and nine? No, I think it's nine hundred and ten fifty-five actually. Nine hundred. No, it's about nine hundred and ten. Just um, roughly. Yeah. Give or take. Give or take a 50 But it, it's, um, again, that, that's, I don't believe in luck. I, I believe in hard work pays off, okay? Um, I put a lot of effort into that property. I made it high end and we're getting, we're getting actually very good rents for that property. So uh, if, but the if return, the rent, I remember working out the return on investment for you for that property. Ridiculous. It's like a thousand percent or something. Yeah. Yeah. But th- this, this first property that I'm talk- referring to, it, it was a no money down deal to get the deal, apart from legal fees. Legal fees were £750. So I got the deal for no money, um, low money down, not no money. 750 quid plus VAT for legal fees. Um, that got me the house. I then, I could have rented it as it was and made probably 100 quid a month cash flow. HMO. So I put about eight or £9,000 into it to make it into a HMO. So I'm going to get much higher return. In the area, a single lets are getting about 550. So I could have still made probably 100, 125 pound a month and just let, just let it run. And we know I didn't have to invest 8,000 8, 8, pound into it. But how long was it going to take you to get that 8,000? And want, then you'll be? I want a property, I want, yeah, I want HMOs, I want... Two years and you'll make more money than if you just left it as it is. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about investing. All of a property without actually having to buy it at the minute. And it lets you test the water. So if it doesn't work... um, For as long as it takes, I've added value to the property. I've... And then I will give them my intent in four years' time. Mm. So in four years' time, I'll say to them either, yes, I'm going to... So my, my, my agreement with them is in four years' time, I will say, yeah, I'm going to buy it or not buy it. I can sell that property to an investor. Mm-hmm. So I, don't, I might not be pull out of it because let's just hypothesize. I haven't got the money for the deposit. Just hypothetically, okay, um, and the property's rent. What would I do with that situation? I could either then go back to the vendors and say, "Look, I'm going to pull out." There's the management company. On this date, the contracts will change from me to you, and you're going to benefit from the cash flow. Do you want to do that? If they say yes, then happy. Got cash flow and property. It's been refurb. It's in good condition. In many ways, that's tenants, a better deal for them. That's a much better deal for them. But if they say no, we've done all the work. But if they say no, also we want we don't want the property back. We want you to sell it. I can then market that to my list of investors because I deal with so many investors. I listen. One of my investors is buying that property. So, <coughs> so for them. The, the original vendors, it's a done deal. They've sold the house. Mm. They've just not been paid for it yet. They'll yeah. get paid for it in, in 20... But basically what you're doing is you're taking away... Because you've got people in stressful situations yep. you're, and you're solving their problem. Yes. They can't sell the house. They don't want to manage it. They don't want to... <laughs> and you're just solving it for them and, it, and in the end giving them money. It only works in certain situations. It yeah. only works when they don't need the money now. Yeah. Um, but... 
What I will say with lease options, um, you see a lot of people advertising lease options as sourcers online, on Facebook and things like that. I see this all the time. I actually saw it yesterday by a guy. Now he's got a lease option for sale up in the Northeast. Um, I think it was Gateshead somewhere. Um, now the property is current. <laughs> It's laughable, honestly. It's utter laughable. Right, okay, so the current today's value, £60,000, okay? He's got it secured on a lease option in five years for £72,000. Cash flow, nothing. The monthly payment to the, the vendor is £475. The rent is £475 to £500. So if at best, he's going to get £25 a month positive cash flow. Do you know what his finder's fee for this property was? What? Sixteen thousand pound. Sixteen thousand. Yeah. I mean what Muppet would buy that? And more importantly, what Muppet would try and sell that? Come on, man. <laughs> that's that's what, Nick, can you pull out of that deal? Oh, it sounds like it wasn't a very good one. It's rubbish. Who would even sell that as a deal? <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's utter ridiculous. Who would buy it? Like if you got six if you're gonna put sixteen grand into a lease option that's worth sixty grand, you can buy the thing now. And get, oh man, it gets so <laughs> annoying. Uh, when you see these deal sources selling deals that just do not stack up, it's utter pathetic. Yeah, so just because it's a lease option doesn't mean it's a good lease no, option. No, just because it's a lease option doesn't mean you should take it. No, I suppose it's, um, it's you, you want to be getting cash flow, don't you? You want to be getting cash flow yes. out of it. Otherwise, you know, people say, oh, it's a free house. Mm, yeah, but it's not a free house because you don't own it. Don't you worry. only own it down the line when you pay for it. Yeah. So it isn't really a free house unless. But the thing you, is, if it's not cash flowing, then what's the point? What's the point? If it's not cash flowing, how are you going to raise the money to buy it in five years' time? Yeah. Because property is expensive in the sense of that it's got running costs, it's got maintenance costs. The only way it's a free house is if it cash flows so well that you can use the money from the house to buy it at the end. In which case, <laughs> it really is a. Do you know, like, all my lease options, do you know what I do with the money that comes in every month? Just save it to buy them. It does, I don't see it. I do not see it. It goes into a bank account that all my property stuff comes out. I've got, it, 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 each property has got a separate bank account and it comes into the bank account and that pays the household bills. I don't see it. So it just builds up. Mm. So in, in four or five years time, whenever it comes to buying these properties, there's a pot of money in each account. You buy property. it with its own, with, with its own money. money. Generated so in theory, it is a no money down deal because the money that I'm going to be using to buy that property in five years is funded by itself. Yeah. Um, though obviously some of the properties need a little bit of refurb, so I've had to put that money in to begin with. Um, to begin with, but I'll get that. Might the, the, I'll, might I'll get that, that back. To top it up slightly at the yeah, end. But. but my refurb money, yes, I've had to invest that, so that's not that bit's not more, no money down. But I'll get that at the back end when I sell them and or when I benefit from capital appreciation. Yeah, it's just it's just property investing. Um, and if you do it sensibly, it's very profitable. If you do it wrong, then. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. It's great. Okay, well, I hope you get that. We found that useful. That is a basic uh, overview of what a lease option is, how it works, why it's a win-win. Because it's important that it is a win-win. It has to be win-win. Otherwise, it's it's you know you're never going to get the deal. You need to when you go going for these. You need to really understand that it is a win-win yeah. as well. Um, so it's now time for this. So in the news this week, uh, the Times have done a, a study on estate agents. Yep. And basically what they've found is, that, and a lot, a lot of investors will probably know this anyway, but what they've found is that estate agents are commonly overvaluing properties. Yeah. And the reason they do this is because if you have three estate agents come and look at your home yeah. and one of them says it's worth... 200 yeah and we'll get 200 for it and the other one says it's worth 160 you're going to go for the one that says 200 sure. but the thing is is that this the, the state agents that are mostly overvaluing are the ones that charge higher yeah. percentage fees so what's ending up happening is you're going people are going with the expensive estate agents it's not selling they're dropping the price to what it's actually worth. To what it's actually worth. Yeah. It's selling, but then they've tricked you into into going with them and therefore paying a higher fee. It's very uh, misleading, isn't it? So they're obviously doing it on purpose because the, the, it gets them the oh, they it gets you the foot in the door, and then you're contracted to be there for X number of months. Yeah. Um, so here you go. So the Times analysis of Zoopla data found that homeowners who list their property with any of the ten estate agents that overvalue the most would pay on average double the rate of commission charged by the ten agents that valued the least. 
Okay. Uh, it also found that the largest estate agents were most likely to oversell sellers' properties, and the asking price um, f- on a third of properties was reduced by an average of twenty three thousand four hundred. Wow, it's quite a jump, isn't it? It's interesting because whenever like like Samuel laughed about this from stage when you uh, when an estate agent sells. And you've like for instance, you've got your property on with an estate agent, uh, and it's not selling. And then you ring them up, and they say, "Yeah, but it's Easter." He's buying a house in the summer, and then you're constantly battering the price down. Yeah. Um, and then it does sell eventually, but it's tell you that houses sell when they're valued at the right price. They yeah. do. Uh, so when you get houses that. Taking longer for the properties to sell, yeah, because obviously you're having to go through all the faff of having. Let's go back to whole statistics about: is it a doom and gloom market? Like everyone's saying it's doom and gloom market, or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. properties are to sell, but they're taking ages to sell because they've been overpriced in the first place. Probably, if they were the market value, would they sell? Because let's face it: most people are going to be buying with a mortgage. Yeah, they're not buying cash. Most buying the mortgage so if the house is only worth 150,000 but the estate agent is trying to sell it for one you'll say it's only worth 150 so two lessons and that just causes problems all the way down the chain yeah two lessons that I can think of from an from an investor's point of view mm-hmm. by the obvious lesson don't be swayed by the estate agent that, that says that they can get the most for it yeah and number two and this is a big one. We've talked about this before. But the market value. No. Yeah. 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 Because so it's, because people because it's it's not even it's not even it's uh, studies have shown yeah. that it <laughs> that it clearly they're valuing it for more than what is actually yeah than what is actually worth yeah very so, true so you cannot take the asking price. As the market isn't the well, market. It's like value. anything, isn't it? You can't become a motivated seller. Um, so you could, you don't want to be a motivated seller in any aspect. So, um, yeah. But we're talking about buyers now, an investor buying. Yeah, but most, yeah, but the thing is, if you're, it comes back to a little bit too good to be true. So if you get three estate agents come to you, and you 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 know roughly what your house is worth. I know roughly my house is worth like. 320,000, something like that. If I get an estate agent come into me and two of them say, yeah, we can get you like 315, 320, 325, it's about right. If I get one come and say, we get 340 for it, most people will go with that one that says 340. Mm. And they'll not really look into things like the percentage of what they're charging for the rate. They'll think, well, he's, he's obviously more expensive because he's, he's, char- he's got investors that will buy it for higher amounts. Mm. I've, I know what estate agents are like. They're all. But we had, we had some of our students, didn't we, come to us yesterday and they, they were showed us a property deal they'd got. Yeah. And they said, valuation. Yeah. Um, valuation 175, but the agreed, the agreed price 150. And we were like, where'd you get the valuation from? Yeah. The estate agent. Nowhere. We looked basically. into that, didn't we? Yeah. And there was nothing nearby, nothing in the last. Eight agents no. valuation is the key. I think, and the thing is, right? Shows, shows me, tells, tells me, improves to me. me. Yep. And most estate like agents, that. it's good, isn't it? Yeah. And most estate agencies, there's normally about 10, 15 people. I would say most estate agencies, you've got probably got two really good people. You've probably got two sort of really good, knowledgeable property experts. And the rest of them, not being disrespectful of state agencies, but they're just selling properties. And their job is to work on commission to get sell that property for as high as possible and get paid their commission. Mm-hmm. Most of them don't actually know what they're talking about. No. How many times have you been out to a viewing, there are state agents there, and they don't have a clue what you're talking about? It's like on like a, on a podcast, for example, you've got one person that knows what they're talking about, and one person hasn't got a clue what they're talking about. It's the Pretty same much. with everything. It's the same with everything. You've always got one smart arse and one knowledgeable. <laughs> and, one, and one moron. <laughs> one smart arse. One smart arse. One, one smart arse. arse and one moron. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Um, no, my point being, look, estate agents, they're not the experts that everyone thinks they are. They really aren't. No. They really aren't. Like, do you know, you, next time you're out looking at on a viewing, 
Um, like ask an estate agent what Article 4 is. Most of them don't know. They think it's a district in New York. <laughs> they do. They don't know. It's ridiculous. Okay. And um, play games with them. Say, oh, yeah, what about Article 40? Is that involved yet? Article 40? 40, 14, 21, Article 36. Just ask if it's been enforced. And the, a lot of them will go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't actually know what they're talking about. And I'm making it up just to play games with them. Um, <laughs> it's actually quite funny. You should do it. <laughs> See, I told you it was not <laughs> just, It's funny. <laughs> like, for instance, another thing I like to do with mortgage brokers... Um, mortgage brokers now. and um, um, sorry estate agents because um, sometimes you get two types of estate agents right you get the estate agent that basically just sits on their phone and says yeah yeah have a look around whatever and they just play on the phone and you get the other estate agent that walks you around like they're, they're, like they're an expert and they, they, they walk past the damp because they, they just say oh yeah just need a little, little look of paint or the they, they things like that they just they ignore all that sort of stuff but they try and come across like they really know what they're talking about and then they start talking about mortgage, because they're trying to sell you their mortgage broker products and all that sort of stuff. And I always say, no, no, I'm, I'm fine. I've, um, I've got like a really good mortgage broker and I make up some random name. Like I'll say like, yeah, I've got a mortgage broker. It's called ABC Finance. Do you know who I'm talking about? I actually do know ABC Finance. And they'll be like, yeah, 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 we know them. And I'm like, well, how do you know them? I've just made it up. But I'm just playing games. Uh, there is ABC Finance. There probably is, but I, I say all sorts. Like I've said, bad, ex bad example, isn't it? Oh, I mean, this is makes it some random, random. Have you My heard of point Camp, being, Camp Reliance. Yeah, um, no, they haven't got made it up. Yeah, but there, there is one. So, my point being is they're not the experts that you think. Why don't you say something stupid rather than ABC Finance? Why don't you say that was just like, an example for the podcast? I've not said that in real life. So, what did you say? Why, why didn't you just remember. say what you said in real life? I can't remember what it was. Why don't you just say one that you had said rather than making one up that actually does exist? It's such a bad example. So, like I saying, um, property investors, I don't know, have you heard of uh, Alastair Cunningham? And they go, Yeah, yeah, I know. He, oh, he's, Jesus. The, he's the sidekick on the podcast. And they'll go, he'll go, Ah, no, he isn't. I made him up, but it is actually true. So, come up with a better one um, Trent Financial Services. I bet that. Yes. It doesn't. Come up with crazy. But my point being... See what you can get away with. I will. How about BS? Uh, BS. <laughs> <laughs> no one would... No one would have something like that. Or BS Limited. BS Limited. I've got a... I've, I use Interestingly. A, I use BS Finance. Do you know, do you know them? Yeah. Do you, yeah, yeah, I've heard of them. Really? Really? Yeah. Mm, that is BS Finance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the point being, they're not the experts, I think. They, they really aren't. Most of them are just selling houses. Um, they're just trying to sell houses this month because it's just a passing job for them, which is it's fine. I'm not criticising them in, in the sense I'm not belittling them in that way, but don't... These bloody estate agents no, just treat not, it like a job. <laughs> what they're, they're not like? the property experts that they make out, some of them. Okay. Um, so why would you trust the valuation on things? Why would you? I know so many estate agents, and do you know how they value stuff? Go on. How they, what do they think they can sell it for? Literally, there's no... There's that, no is, that is how you value something, No, 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 it? it's not. You, you look at market comparables... Yeah, but how you value something, surely surely the value of no, something no, no, is what no, someone's no. prepared to pay no. for it. Yes, there is. But most of the, Like, for instance, I know lots of estate agents, and I ask them, how do you value properties? And they say, whatever we feel the most we can get for it. And I say, so you, you've got no, like, no computer system that you put it into, and you work out comparables, you work out all that sort of stuff. They don't. They literally go, um, I think we can get 200 for that. And they just put it on. I said, well, what about nearby? What about sold nearby? But they'll do that because they'll know. I don't think they do, mate. They, really they will don't. because they'll know. They'll have an idea in their head of yeah. what's, what it's roughly worth. Yeah. But then this is where it comes back to this article. Because they'll know the area. They'll know what other they houses will, are sold yeah. for. But this is where it comes back to this article. Um, where what but, happen, what this is saying is they're yeah, deliberately, deliberately upping it. Upping it. So they'll, they'll know that that's So they'll think the it's worth 200, and, they'll tell them 240. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they'll know the street value is at 180, 200, and they'll yeah. just say it's higher. Just to get them... Just to get us to say, yeah, you can sell my house. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to sign the contract, Correct. Correct. pay you the three percent, two percent. Correct. And then they will drop it back down. To uh, it, it's criminal. I like the way Harry's just explained the article that we've been talking about for the last. Five. Thank you for that. That is very enlight very enlightening. It's now time for this. <laughs>
How long have we been going so far? About 35. See, some of them are quite short answers, so I think right. we should do a bit more. I think we should do... I don't need to go quick. I, I like aiming for about 40 to 45. Right, fine. Seven minutes. So we've there's three questions here that we can answer, and two of them are quite quick. Okay. There's go. four, actually. Two of them are very quick. Two of them are a little bit longer. Well, let's do a long one and a short one, and then we'll do a long one and a short one next week as well. Right. But there's like eight questions we have to get through for this one. Oh, there's eight. Yeah. Okay, let's do three. Right. Um. Okay. Hey, Roland? Yeah, it's better for that cock. Me, you're waiting for this cock in here. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking no. Although, although it is interesting. Can you, do you get yourself on film saying that? I'm just waiting for that cock out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You said right. I'm waiting for it. We've got you on. on. Get, I'm waiting let's for go. that Let's go, come cock. on. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm pretty go. sure you did. You're going to edit it out now, though. <laughs> okay, so it's time for the questions of this week, and we have quite a few, so I'm going to kick it off. Go on, um, kick it off, Al. Kick it off. This is from Dan Bull. Um, and it says, hey, I'm very new to property, so please excuse me if this sounds silly. Never sounds silly, Dan. In regards to rent, rent, lease options, what if the tenant stops paying the rent? Hmm. So what's your question? What if? So if the tenant stops paying, paying, if the... If the tenant stops paying the rent, you kick them out and find a new tenant. Yep. But you're still liable. Um, obviously, it's like a business. So if you take a property on a rent to rent basis... It's no different to renting a shop. If you rent a shop and you don't get any sales, you still got to pay the rent in the shop. If you rent a business premises, you've still got to pay the rent. So it it depends is. on what you're doing because normally on a rent to rent, normally, lease option maybe not, but a rent to rent is going to be HMO yep. or service accommodation. Yeah. So service accommodation they pay in advance, yep. so you don't have to worry about that at all. Um, HMO, you've got four, five. Tenants typically, so if one of them stops paying, you should still be covering your your bills, but you just need to kick them the out. The question is not silly, but the fact that you're saying rent, rent, and lease options is irrelevant because it's like any it doesn't matter what what strategy you're using to buy the property. Tenants are tenants. If they stop paying the rent, it doesn't matter if it's rent to rent or if it's a buy to let. Um, if, if you're they in control stop paying of it. the rent, you need to go through the legal channels to chase that rent. You need to evict them. Um, but ultimately, you're still responsible for covering the bills of that property because it's your property. Um, so, well, if you're if you're getting an agent to manage it, they should sort of take care of that for you, really. Well, they'll take care of the legal aspect of it, but ultimately, you, it's still you that's paying the bills, so you still have to pay the bills. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Good Next, question. Um, Alex Cunningham. Hey. Um, Alex Cunningham. What on uh, <laughs> I've recently purchased uh, both Alice's and Samuel's book. Uh, Alice's book is phenomenal. You didn't say that. I just made it up. My question for you both is how do I start off in property and what are the key points I need to know to get started? Um, if you've just read my book and Samuel's book, that will cover a lot of it. Um, I think the next thing you need to do is get yourself along to Property Investors Bottom of this video. If you, if, you, if, you go in, if you get new into property, crash course. You need the crash free. course. It's the place to start. I think absolutely get along to that. You've read both Samuel's book and my book. Uh, Russell's book is coming out soon. Read that as well. That will be mm, a, an it's awesome more of a business start. book. But yeah, read it. Yeah, by 100%. Um, right. Go so on, yeah, last one, last next one. one. Last um, one. What? I'm going to do two. John Blade, my audio book is coming out very soon. Watch your space. And then final question. Is it? Yeah. What happened with that? Because weren't you meant to be filming that? Yeah, so what happened was the audio, the, the recording studio... I booked in at a certain time and the guy was still in bed when I arrived, which really annoyed me. So I told him to stick it and I tried to find a new audio, a uh, new studio. Um, Please tell me you had to go back to the guy that was in bed after telling him to stick it. No, I didn't, no. Oh. Um, so I found another studio, but I only had a two hour slot and I, I've only got halfway through it and my, my schedule has been so busy that I've not had time to finish it. So Is it you reading it? Yes, it is, yeah. Is it really? Yeah. That's awkward, isn't it? Is right, awkward. okay, next question. You'd have to rush that much. Can we just dwell on that for a second? You're reading it in your Scottish accent. I'm going to have to have uh, subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have subtitles on an audio book. I know. There is subtitles. It's called the actual book. They're going to have to... They're gonna have Just to, buy the They're going to have to read it along. <laughs> so they're going to be listening to it, reading the book, oh. going, oh, yeah. oh, that's what he said. That's what he means. I um, Everyone keeps... I did say I wasn't going to read my book as audio. You did, I know. Um, I said I was going to get somebody else to do it, but I've if had so many people message if me. If you say, want a good laugh, by the way, right, stick on the YouTube subtitles on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I know, because it's funny. It, it picks up me perfectly. Him, on the other hand, it doesn't it, have it's a clue. Just like, it just goes like this. This is what the, this is what the subtitles does. It just goes... Uh, 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 I don't know what he says. 
that's basically, that's basically what happens. So it is quite funny. Right, final question of the day, and then we're going to have to. There'll call be people that day. there'll be people that watch the the podcast on silent. They're watching it at work or something, yeah. and they'll just think that you're a numpty because they'll be reading it going, "What? What's the on?" Ever. There are also people that listen to it that think you're a numpty, so I suppose it's not much. Uh, difference. I don't mind. Last one. Right. Uh, you both what has been your biggest headache um uh, day i'm actually not very well today i've got a sore throat and a a headache so that's been my biggest headache today drinking lemon and ginger with honey in yeah it's it's helping a little bit but i'm not i find with headaches So that probably no, didn't help. I wouldn't have thought so. Milk's not good for when you've got headaches. Is it not? No. No, that's probably a mistake. That's my biggest well. headache today. That is my biggest headache. Mm. Is it just today, though? Is that what, what, what's to, the date, to date. So oh, to time. date. Oh, it wasn't my biggest. Good ibuprofen, paracetamol. Yeah, I'd probably yeah. say that. I'd probably say that. Does he mean property related? I think he might. Go on. Hit, hit us right, up okay, my biggest headache today is having to put up with Russell Leeds every time we do this podcast. You, you don't understand the trauma I go through. I mean, uh, they do. They watch it every week. <laughs> no, seriously, um, biggest headache is just overcome. Mind, like, constantly interrupting, man. Sorry. My biggest you headache today. I won't interrupt again, I promise. You just go. Just, just, you do it. You got this, man. Is overcoming um, One, two, three. my Whoosh. disbeliefs and my objections in my head tell me I couldn't do what I'm doing. Um, that's my biggest headache. My biggest headache is dealing with a buy, refurbish, refinance and having the value. And struggle. I'd, I've always sorted it in the end, but it's always been yeah. a pain in the ass. Yeah, a lot of people underestimate that when they do buy refurb, refinance, don't they? Yeah. And they're so reliant on getting the valuation that they think they're going to get. Yeah. Um, be conservative. So thanks ever so much for tuning in. We will be back same time, same place next week. Hope you enjoyed the show. See you next week. See you guys.